subject is the introduction to LucidWorks Fusion. And let me say a couple of words about me. My name is Alexander uh, Knarski. I'm a senior software engineer Fusion core team at LucidWorks. And uh, I'm working on a Fusion backend, pretty much everything related to backend API development. Uh, you can uh, send me email at alexander.knarski at lucidworks.com uh, in case if you have question after uh, the talk. And uh, prior to LucidWorks, I spent five years at Trulia, uh, scaling up uh, solar-based uh, Trulia backend search. I led the backend search team there. And uh, prior to Trulia, I was working on a Xantes offering called Digital Safe, which was back then the largest private email archive in the world. And the company Xantes was acquired by Autonomy, so I spent some time at Autonomy as well, about two years. And let me say also a couple of words about LucidWorks. Uh, of course, you know LucidWorks is the company that sponsors this conference. And uh, it's a well-established search technology company, an international company based in San Francisco, uh, but with office in Bangalore, Bangkok, uh, Raleigh, London, Cambridge, UK, uh, with the acquisition of Tweakit. Now we have an office in Cambridge. Um, the solutions from LucidWorks power uh, search across many Fortune 1000 companies, about 300 uh, customers. Uh, it's a fusion, it's a solar, uh, it's a consulting services. And uh, LucidWorks uh, supports solar and uh, solar development. And uh, about half of the active committers to solar project are employed by LucidWorks. And uh, currently LucidWorks contributes over 70% of uh, uh, current solar uh, open source code base. And uh, LucidWorks provides solar consulting and support services as well, uh, but the Fusion is the main uh, product of uh, LucidWorks. So uh, LucidWorks Fusion uh, enters the world of LucidWorks Fusion. It's a nice uh, splash screen, which uh, users see when they log in into uh, developer's UI, uh, so-called also admin UI, because it's the same thing. Uh, so uh, what the LucidWorks Fusion is and what it uh, what would it mean for the developers? So if you will say in a couple of words, uh, LucidWorks Fusion, it's a platform to develop search and data applications. Uh, it's built on top of uh, Apache Solar, it's used solar as an engine, and uh, Apache Spark. And uh, development with the Fusion first means simplified development. So the time to develop search application with Fusion is significantly shorter than if you start with a plain vanilla solar and add your own enterprise features. Because for larger companies, uh, you definitely need to go with uh, security, you need to work with the uh, deployment infrastructure and so on and so on. Uh, as for the deployment, Fusion is also a robust deployment uh, platform. Uh, it's a highly scalable. Uh, it runs on top of solar spark that could scale by themselves. But uh, Fusion also takes care of all your deployments and deployments of application written on um, Fusion platform, and they could be deployed on-premise as well as in cloud. This is our most up-to-date and advanced uh, feature um, offering. It's a Fusion Cloud. I think you all uh, heard the uh, talk of Will Hayes this morning when he was uh, showing off uh, Fusion Cloud product. So Fusion comes with the enterprise features out of the box. Uh, connectors, parsers, security, monitoring, and many other enterprise class features are built in. And it's uh, probably the most important why Fusion is important for search application developers. Uh, basically, you're getting a lot of components, a lot of services out of the box that can use right off the shelf to start your development and to uh, develop really uh, nice, beautiful, and relevant uh, applications with uh, personalized uh, search results and so on. Uh, so, fusion means uh, artificial intelligence driven relevance. Of course, it's a lot of buzzwords, but uh, fusion comes with uh, uh, machine learning models already pre built for you. Uh, it comes with a signal processing, uh, natural language processing, relevance tuning, analytics tools, uh, including dashboards and uh, all the fancy UI stuff to answer user questions and solve complex search problems. Uh, Fusion also means data that could be accessed uh, your way. So traditional approach of full text search uh, when you work with a solar and other search engine is great. Uh, also like solar is a great NoSQL uh, search as well. Uh, but Fusion adds uh, now ability to use SQL queries. So 
technically you can work with the fusion as a SQL database and the fusion takes care of all distributed searches if it involves data stored in Solar and Spark as well. And fusion also comes with a rich set of uh, tools for data analytics. So if you need to learn your data, if you need to know your data better, uh, you will be able to see the results of uh, computation of vital statistics across the documents uh, or a specific set of results. And uh, those results can be clustered, summarized, uh, visualized. Uh, so it's a very important uh, offering uh, of Fusion itself. On the right side, you see the logos. Uh, it's a kind of new thing, and uh, it pretty much it reflects the uh, splitting of Fusion offerings uh, with the upcoming uh, version 4.0. So current release of Fusion is a 3.1.2, and it comes as a one single thing. So pretty much everything like a connectors and a core Fusion uh, UI, like a dashboard, it comes as a one uh, thing. Um, but starting with a uh, version 4.0, uh, Lucid Works will um, provide a, a separated offerings of a Fusion Core Server, which is uh, core services, a Fusion AI, AI, which is pretty much machine learning models and uh, tools to work with the uh, relevant uh, personalization of content, uh, uh, clustering, and, and things like this, and a Fusion App Studio. Uh, if you saw a presentation of Will Hayes uh, this morning, you probably saw the uh, application developed by App Studio. So it's pretty much a product of our cooperation with the Twiki, the company uh, which LucidWorks acquired this year. And it really allows to build a wonderful uh, UI. So as for the UI and data visualization, Fusion comes itself with a, a set of tools to build analytics dashboards uh, called the Silk, uh, which also available as a open source version called Banana. And uh, it's a, itself, it's a part of a Kibana uh, dashboard. Uh, so you can use them off the shelf. Uh, also, Fusion works very well with the LucidWorks view, which is a simple but powerful toolkit to create a Fusion and Solar uh, based uh, search application. It's pretty much a toolkit to create a UI. And uh, you can uh, create a simple but fully functional uh, search application front end in like one hour with the LucidWorks view. And uh, LucidWorks view is open sourced by uh, LucidWorks itself. Uh, it's an open source product, it's not coming with the Fusion, but it's available for download and Fusion works just well with it. And uh, finally, as I mentioned, the App Studio. Uh, it's a, a product which I inherited from a, a tweak kit, pretty much it's a part of our new offerings. It, uh, it's, it's a full scale UX oriented product to build search and data front ends uh, in the form of applications, apps. And those apps, they can be deployed as a part of Fusion, they can be scaled as a part of Fusion. It comes with the many UI components like navigation, auto suggestion, auto complete charts, and everything else. And so, a uh, very nice thing. Um, let me talk a little bit about the Fusion architecture. And uh, uh, luckily, we have a Fusion architect sitting right here, David Arthur. I mean, so if you have a questions on this, you can always ask him after the session. But <laughs> if you're talking about a uh, Fusion architecture, Fusion uh, consists of uh, several components like Apache Spark, Apache Solar, Zookeeper, which we use to store our configuration, uh, the core services component, which uh, hosts all the uh, logical uh, services, uh, REST API, which provides access to all this stuff, as well as the admin UI and the connectivity to external UIs like Lucid Works View and other apps built by the customer. So, uh, if you talk about uh, Fusion lingo, uh, Fusion has objects uh, such as pipeline, stage, connectors, data source, parsers. I will be a little bit talking about this later. It has components which pretty much a part of Fusion that could be deployed uh, separately. And uh, to scale up, you pretty much just fire up more of those components of the uh, connectors. For example, it's a component that could be uh, run simultaneously on multiple nodes and you can acquire your data uh, like in parallel. Uh, the uh, Spark itself is a component, Solar is a component, uh, and what's uh, important with the Fusion, you can use a Solar which comes with the Fusion, or you can use your own Solar. We do not require any dependency on a, like a Solar version, so you can just start using Fusion with your own version of Solar, uh, which is pretty important. Uh, the proxy which acts as a load balancer also does a security trimming for the request, and uh, uh, here also you see the set of apps either written by a customer or like, uh, written using the App Studio and things like this. 
uh, the services, it's a, it's a, it's a logical um, uh, service, like indexing, query, security, which pretty much defines the functionality of uh, fusion. Uh, if you talk about the component, uh, about the objects, uh, the one and uh, the first important uh, object in the uh, fusion side is the collection. So uh, you probably know the ter term collection and the, you know, the notion of collection uh, since, you know, SOAR. And the fusion collection is uh, basically a SOAR document collection uh, managed by a fusion. So it supports all the SOAR collection attributes uh, regarding like replication, sharding, uh, but it has some extra uh, parameters, uh, some uh, extra attributes that can be configured in Fusion. And the key word here is uh, pretty much managed by Fusion because it, it means a lot. So when it comes to managing your data, if you need like support configuration of your data store in, in SOAR, you need to do it like manually. Uh, Fusion takes care of like migration of collections, takes care of splitting collections, takes care of many things which typically you need to do by yourself. So it, it's a value add uh, thing when it comes to uh, Fusion collections. Uh, Fusion also have a auxiliary collections because primary collection is where you put user data. Auxiliary collections, they keep a metadata generated by Fusion or collected by Fusion to augment user data when it comes to result of search. Uh, something like logs, uh, uh, queries, signals, aggregation of signals and so on. Um, also, uh, there are other objects linked to collections such as uh, data sources, this query and index pipelines, we'll be talking about this later, uh, signals and so on. And uh, all the configuration is here is in, in, uh, is in kept in Zookeeper and it is, uh, also could be uh, distributed so you pretty much uh, have the same configuration of fusion across like the whole cluster. Uh, for the connectors, connectors is uh, another enterprise uh, feature which comes with Fusion is probably most significant when it uh, comes to application development. It's definitely something which have immediate impact on ability of the developer to create a quality search and data application because uh, with the connectors uh, you have access uh, to pretty much all modern uh, data source, uh, document stores, databases that currently exist. Uh, Fusion comes with over 50 connectors, 40 comes with the Fusion and about 10 is available through our uh, professional services. And, uh, sorry guys, it's totally unexpected. Just a second. So connectors, uh, Fusion comes with over 50 connectors and uh, <coughs> by default Fusion uh, 3.0 ships with the four uh, connectors. It's a local file system, file upload, GDBC and a web crawling, a web connector. But other connectors, they are available and uh, they can be installed on demand. And pretty much this point and click process. If you need to connect to some data source, uh, you basically do the same what you do like in your, uh, like IntelliJ when you need to install the plugin. You just point and click and say I wanted this connector and it will be downloaded from a Lucid Works site, installed and ready to use. So, as I said, if you, uh, over the 50 connectors available for pretty much any uh, modern data uh, source. So you can index your data, you can get access to this data and so on. And uh, also connectors are deployed as a separate fusion service as main and uh, to scale you pretty much can just fire up more connectors. Uh, the connectors, uh, uh, multiple connectors can work on the same data source, uh, the same uh, data repository and they can index to the, the same uh, fusion collection or to multiple fusion collections. It's all flexible, it's all configurable. Uh, data sources and parsers is another object. Uh, data source, they use to configure and control the ETL process uh, through a specific connector. Uh, something like, you know, the schedule of your uh, runs is another lingo, so the process of acquisition uh, through the uh, connector uh, data source, it's called runs, it's, it's when you acquire data. And uh, data source runs can be scheduled. Uh, another configuration option for data source include like uh, what we do, how exactly we do crawling, uh, how exactly we do the data acquisition, like initial filtering, deduplication parameters, and so on. Uh, LucidWorks use our uh, own uh, crawler called Andam for many uh, type of crawls, but it could work also with the third party uh, crawlers like Nudge if you wanted to do it, I mean, it's pluggable. Uh, the parsers itself, it's a, a piece of data which is responsible to pretty much 
uh, identify the structure of the document and extract all the available data and metadata. And uh, uh, the parser itself, it, it could contain multiple parsing stages, like you know, the, the parsing of XML, parsing of a uh, comma separated file, HTML, and so on. Uh, Fusion comes with the Apache Pika, which is as one of the parsing stage, but also it comes with others, uh, parsers written by us. And the main reason for this, it was a performance. Pretty much we wanted to have a highly performance parser. And uh, the parsing stage is totally configurable also. So uh, pretty much you can just, uh, there is a checkbox. You can say that I wanted to auto detect the type of document and then the parsing will take care of it, uh, including like multi, um, uh, complex documents, uh, for example, like PDF with the images, and you can parse PDF, and then you ca can parse and extract uh, metadata from images and so on. Um, index pipelines. Index pipelines is a paradigm uh, which is pretty much one of the staple paradigms of the fusion. So the whole idea is that uh, you process the data which you get in into solar uh, through this, a set of steps. Uh, so the sequence of ordered data processing uh, steps uh, and each step is called stage in uh, Fusion Lingo. So the output of parser is called the pipeline document. It, it's pretty much like a, a document which flows through this index pipeline and then each stage transforms the content of the pipeline document or it also can put something in a context. Uh, this context is used to pass the data between stages. So the whole idea is that you have a set of already prepackaged stage and each stage does something uh, for you, like language detection, for example. Uh, so you can use, you can start using it, and once you combine it with the pipeline, you have a full, like a data processing pipeline, uh, almost in no time. And it allows you to really have a complex, uh, complex and sophisticated ETLs uh, combined very quickly. And you do not need to know, like you know, solar synthesis in many cases even to start. Uh, start indexing very quality data using Fusion. Uh, the pipeline document itself it has a set of fields. Um, it has a, a values, metadata. It's very similar to the concept of solar document fields, but uh, enriched also. And um, also, we do have um, index profiles, uh, which is a, a alias to index pipeline. The whole idea here is a, like, when you have a, in production, when you have the indexing process, you have a flow of data coming into Fusion and you do not want to interrupt it. And sometimes you cannot interrupt it. Like if you index the Twitter feed, for example, you cannot stop indexing it. But if you need to adjust your pipeline, uh, technically you already have an endpoint where you put your data when the connector send the data. So you can keep this endpoint with this alias, but change the pipeline under the hood using this alias. So it's uh, also very important uh, feature, very convenient. Uh, index stages. So far, um, Fusion comes with about 40 index stages, and each of them that does something like, and some of them could be quite sophisticated, some of them kind of simple, uh, some of them could uh, do some, uh, like, uh, another, uh, they could perform another calls, like you know, call to JDBC to enhance your data, which you acquire through another type of connector. So uh, on the right, you see the configuration of field mapping states. It's a uh, simple stage, but uh, it's very helpful when you need like to rename your field or you know, to split the data of your field and so on. Uh, and uh, in the middle, uh, you see the configuration of default index pipeline in Fusion 3.0. It consists by default in three stages, the field mapping, solar dynamic field mapping stage, which is a guesser of a, a proper type for your document field. And finally, solar indexer, the stage that actually sends data to solar. Um, index workbench, it's a, a very powerful configuration and experimentation tool. And it's pretty much it's one of the most important tools in the Fusion UI. And uh, uh, what it does, it simulates the results of end-to-end -end data processing of like data extraction from data source to solar index. And the power of it is basically you could, um, you can change the configuration of the whole uh, like process. You can change the data source, you can change the parser, uh, you can adjust the parser stages, you can uh, change the pipeline, you can configure the stages for this pipeline. And then once you press apply, you see immediately how it will affect the data, the final result in, in solar index. So pretty much uh, you save a lot on the process of, you know, like tuning up your indexing process. 
Uh, the query pipelines is a concept very similar to uh, index pipelines, the same thing, but on a query side. So pretty much uh, when uh, client users, they start a search, they submit something like a search keyword uh, to some endpoint of fusion. And uh, then uh, the query pipeline, it consists of the stages. So uh, this, uh, each of the stages, it changes the search request object uh, by augmenting it. And uh, finally, this request is submitted to Solar and then Solar uh, result set is going back to the pipeline and uh, stages can adjust the result of this uh, by augmenting, say, the type of results or the adding some extra documents or extra fields and things like this. And uh, uh, the fusion objects here is the request and the response. So the request is something which stages they assemble, tune, and augment prior to sending to solar. And then uh, the response is the uh, object which comes from back from solar and finally it goes back to the uh, requesting client. Uh, they're similar to index profiles. Um, query profiles also have the aliases. Uh, uh, query pipelines they have aliases called the query profile. So you can uh, pretty much replace your uh, query pipeline while serving traffic, which is pretty good. Uh, Fusion comes with about 30 query stages and some of the query stages, they uh, perform relatively simple operation. Like, you know, you, if you wanted to add a facet, you do not need even to know the flow of index stages. You can just say, I wanted to add a facet on those fields and you will see that like immediate the impact of this. So the stage should come in there, you, you now have facets in the result. And some stages that could be pretty sophisticated because for example, if you wanted to have some relevant uh, personalized searches, you may need to run uh, like a ML model to get back some uh, attributes which you wanted to set on a solar search request, like weights, but to calculate it, it it's a very serious I mean, uh, job which need to be done on, under the hood. Uh, in a fusion, it all goes with a like stage, so you need to, to put stage in your pipeline, you need to configure it, and then you will have personalized, personalized results. So, uh, Query Workbench is a, a tool similar to Index Workbench, and it allows you to simulate the results. And uh, on the left side, you see uh, the current uh, query pipeline, so you can add stages, you can configure each stage, you can change the parameters here, and you will see the results immediately. Uh, you can have a side-by-side -side comparison, like you know, like a previous version of pipeline and the versus the current version pipeline. And in this example, say if you boost something, then you will see automatically like the uh, stage, the boost document stage appears in your pipeline, and you can configure all the parameters there. So very powerful tool to deal with the uh, uh, search. Uh, let me talk briefly about machine learning in the Fusion 3.1. Uh, of course, you know, the machine learning itself is a subject, I mean, uh, it probably will take three times more time to talk than this presentation. Uh, but uh, I will just mention uh, whatever comes with uh, Fusion. Uh, so, uh, recommendation and personalization. So, uh, pretty much you can uh, do stuff like collaborative filtering with the Fusion, and it's very easy to, to use. And you can train your own models. You, you can add your models. The Fusion allows you to, to store uh, your own models. You can train your own models in the Spark and, and so on. Uh, you can work with the query intent and document classifications to do stuff like catalogs. Uh, you can do automatic doc clustering, uh, which is very helpful for stuff like anomaly detection, uh, cluster labeling, uh, product reviews, Q and A. Uh, you can work with the clicks and other signals, which was probably the very first thing uh, in terms of machine learning, which was done in Fusion. So you can uh, collect signals and uh, use them to augment the search results. And I will be talking a little bit about uh, this on the next slide. And also you can do experimentation and A-B testing with uh, Fusion. So basically you can apply like scientific approach and say, instead of like guessing, you can just run experiment and see what's the best or the best outcome. So signals, the signals is pretty much is a uh, events related to one or more documents in Fusion collection. And a Fusion uh, can capture and aggregate signals and then use this to, uh, to customize the search experience. And the uh, signals, they come from various sources. Uh, the sources could be clicks and queries, uh, geolocation, device information, user search history, whatever. Uh, so the m main uh, categories is uh, like user profile, user info behavior. And uh, 
uh, fusion comes with uh, several stages to improve relevance of these signals. So it's, it's important to know. Uh, natural language processing. Um, natural language processing, it kind of, you know, it's very, I mean, uh, typical for the world of search. So uh, fusion comes with uh, some stuff which is already in solar, but some stuff is not. So uh, you can use a Spark job to generate a table of statistically interesting phrases, for example, like a hardware floor or interior paint if you uh, need to. Uh, the spell checking, you can uh, use um, it to correct query types. Uh, synonym detection query expansion. Uh, it's very helpful when you wanted to improve your recall and avoid like a zero results query. And uh, entity extraction is uh, pretty much like it. Fusion uses open NLP models uh, as well as a regex matching and a lookup list. And finally, language detection is a um, traditional engram approach as well as a, a language guesser. Um, but if you really uh, wanted to learn more about the machine learning and data science and how to use it with Fusion, I would uh, say just go to uh, Lucy Vox website. There is a very interesting good articles, webinars on a YouTube channel. We were talking about this also a little bit. Uh, and just read uh, and watch the presentations because uh, it's a kind of complex subject, but uh, Fusion, it's really powerful in, in this sense. And now let me continue with the, uh, another uh, set of enterprise feature which come with the Fusion. Uh, so jobs and scheduling. So everything, pretty much any runnable objects in Fusion, uh, it's all jobs, uh, it could be scheduled. And um, the point here is that once you have a really complex search system, you may need to run like a business process on a schedule. You, you may want to crawl something like you know, a website every two days or you may be wanted to take a look on what changed in database every half an hour and so on. And moreover, uh, in addition to this, you may want to schedule some process based on the outcome of the previous process. So if something is failed, you want for example, to run another crawl or, or, or things like this. So you do not need to write all this infrastructure uh, with the Lucy Vox Fusion because it pretty much comes uh, with a scheduler and jobs and tasks. And uh, all of those, it's uh, available for your own objects as well as the Fusion objects. Uh, all of this is recorded in the jobs history, including the results of the job in terms of counters and some extra data. And uh, uh, for job, uh, the job could be scheduled based on like a start time plus interval. You can use a, a cron string uh, and you can use like, you know, the trigger job by the result of another job. Everything very flexible, very nice enterprise feature. Uh, scheduling, is all, here it's just a slide which shows uh, um, the example of how to schedule a job and how it looks, uh, the result looks in a history. Um, security in Fusion. So Fusion comes with a built-in security, which means a lot for the enterprise world. Um, it's kind of end-to-end security. So Fusion performs all the heavy lifting of user authentication, authorization, working with the realms, uh, encryption. Some, for example, like, you know, you can talk to Fusion and uh, talk between Fusion and Solar uh, SSL encrypted, uh, stuff like this. So for the realms is that, uh, um, uh, okay, so uh, realms are defined how the authentication is done, right? And uh, Fusion it comes uh, with the support of native realm, uh, LDAP, SAML, Cerberus, SSO trust with the CDP. And uh, user uh, in Fusion it have multiple roles and the permissions. And the permissions in Fusion means that uh, the permissions are permissive. So nothing is like, accessible by default in Fusion. It's a pretty much explicit grant, so unless you explicitly granted this user this particular operation, and it's all HTTP-based method plus plus, like user may uh, be able to perform a GET request on this collection or on this pipeline or on this type of document, uh, then it's prohibited, so it, it's very secure. Um, authorization, uh, some realms, they support uh, authorization, so if it's possible, then Fusion also can get the list of permissions for a particular user and, and use it in Fusion. So it simplifies a lot of work with your existing uh, enterprise, uh, like you know, user directories and permissions. Uh, Fusion uh, supports the security uh, sessions with the timeouts, which is uh, configurable. It could be idle or absolute. And also Fusion supports security trimming. So pretty much you can index the access rights for the documents. 
and uh, users, and then uh, you can use it in a fusion. So the uh, result uh, of uh, user query will be trimmed, and the user will not see the data they're not supposed to see. Uh, messaging and alerting. Uh, it's another enterprise feature which is very helpful when you need to interact with other parts of your enterprise ecosystem. Uh, something like, you know, sending messages. So, uh, for example, if you index some content and uh, you wanted to notify users or administration or whatever I mean by uh, email or instant message uh, if uh, certain content is coming. Or if you have something happened to your search infrastructure. Uh, or, uh, for example, if you wanted to send a pager duty alert in case of certain type of user queries or some results returned by these user queries. It's all configurable, it's very helpful in a case if you need to uh, send alerts, if you need to send messages. And uh, of course, Fusion allows to put um, very flexible logging uh, into your log files. So if you have any third party monitoring system for your logs, then uh, Fusion can put something there so the uh, third party monitoring system will be uh, will pick it up and alert as well. Um, Fusion migrator and object uh, export and import. It's a new feature for Fusion 3. And uh, it's also a very important why, because uh, pretty much, as I said, all the configuration is stored in Zookeeper. If you migrate from a previous version to a new version of Fusion, uh, dealing with the Zookeeper in manual mode, it's kind of I mean, it's difficult. Uh, migrating from one cluster to another cluster, from one deployment to another deployment, uh, without such kind of tool, it's also, I mean, it's difficult. So Fusion does uh, have a listing here as well. So all the uh, Fusion uh, objects, they can be exported, imported. So technically you can transfer all your configuration from like old version of Fusion to a new version of Fusion, totally automatic. And uh, uh, also uh, it allows for the back, uh, for the, to do the, you can make a backup of a Fusion configuration, you can restore it uh, as well. And uh, what's also important is that Fusion takes care of all the secrets. So your secrets are stored in a, a special vault, I mean, it's like a security vault, so they will no, never be exposed to like external files when you save the configuration and then restore it. So uh, another uh, very nice feature when it comes to like supporting your deployment. Uh, object browser, once you have a really complex system, uh, like supporting large scale search, you will have hundreds of objects in your system. Uh, you may have multiple data source, you may have multiple data collections uh, associated uh, and other uh, objects. So uh, Fusion comes with object browser which allows you to e easily locate a set of objects you work with. And uh, also Fusion allows you to group uh, objects in a way you, you need it to group. And uh, also uh, Fusion support link between objects. So you pretty much can uh, link the objects you, 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 you need to link and uh, work with this so you can either locate them, you can easily export them. For example, you can just export on only like a certain part of your system and then restore it into new place. And uh, also, uh, the object browser is supposed context menu. So once you located the object, you can just directly go. So if you locate it like a data source, you can directly go from the object browser and tune out the configuration for it. So uh, Blob Store, it's another uh, good um, feature uh, which allows you to store a large uh, and very large uh, streams of data uh, in Fusion. Uh, it's a totally distributed, it's a solar base and it works pretty well for like gigabyte size of um, data which is totally binary. Uh, Fusion uses it to store machine learning models, connector plugins, so when you download like a uh, third party connectors, you, you can just store it there in a blob store. Uh, deployable Fusion applications uh, for Fusion Cloud users and many other things. And uh, uh, it, it's a streaming uh, in, streaming out uh, approach, so pretty much uh, the Fusion Blob API is used streaming. Um, more information, so, okay. Um, first of all, there is a very good set of uh, documentation on the uh, LucidWorks uh, website. Uh, and it includes full reference to Fusion API. Uh, it includes a user guide, uh, including like get started with Fusion, very nice documentation, it's very easy to understand. The Fusion itself is very friendly, like for example, when you start Fusion and run it the first time, it provides you with a sort of wizard and a test set of data, so you can index it and will help 
it is said it uh, like a data source, uh, tune it up, and uh, it's all wizard stuff. It's very nice. I mean, I would just say download, choose and try it. Uh, you will like it. I mean, it, it's, it's something which is re really of user friendly thing. There, there is a Elusive Works blog, and many entries in this blog is dedicated to Fusion. Uh, so go and read there. Like, for example, recently it was a very nice uh, article by uh, Tim Potter on, uh, uh, I think it was on a SQL, using a SQL in Fusion, uh, Spark, and uh, uh, Solar. Uh, there is also a YouTube channel, uh, Elusive Works YouTube channel where you can find the fusion tutorials, it's uh, like a fusion learnings. Uh, I think it's a keyboard there. Uh, there are also webinar recordings on machine learning, fusion on personalization and search and so on. And finally, the last but not least, uh, there is a lucid work solution for nice people who always glad to show you a demo and uh, tell you about which kind of solution, fusion based solution existing for your uh, like area of expertise for your kind of enterprise, like your enterprise search or online retail or something else. So uh, request a demo and they will be very glad to, you know, to talk to you and show you uh, what's available and which kind of solution exists. So uh, that's it for uh, presentation. Do you have uh, questions? Because I also wanted to do some um, quick demo, but I'm sure that uh, we have only a couple of minutes left. So. Uh, I could try, and again, feel free to leave it for the next uh, session if you'd like so, but I could try, I will not be able to do a full scale demo because it's about 20 minutes. Uh, and in this demo I wanted just to show how to start up the Fusion the very first time, like a bare bone system, uh, how to index the data, how to tune up the indexing process, how to tune up the query process, and how to create a basic UI with visualization of data for this, but I will not be able probably to do it. Uh, but I probably will be able to show the results because it was m my plan B. So I, uh, I have a virtual machine where I already did this. So I can just start it up and just show it how, it how it looks like. So it will have a, like a feeling how to, how to work with like Fusion UI as a developer. Uh, because uh, Fusion uh, UI is pretty much is for developers. So the result of this is persisted and then you do all the access uh, to Fusion through the API. You, you can work with the uh, uh, developer's UI, but of course you, you have to write your own front end to deal with the fusion data. But uh, as a developer, I mean, it, it's really a pleasure to work with the fusion because you, you can do a visual style programming for almost everything related to search to create a um, search application. So, okay. So here, uh, basically this is, um, uh, it's a Fusion UI, and um, I'm pretty sure that it will now time out. It's uh, it probably will ask for a login password. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a simulation. So pretty much, I mean, what we have here. Um, uh, it, 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 it's a data source. So the data source itself, you see. Uh, I defined a data source uh, which use a connector, local file system connector to index a comma separated file with about 5,000 movie titles from IMDB. And uh, to do this, you pretty much just pick up, uh, when you need to uh, create a data source, you go here and then choose. You see like four of those, uh, it's something which you pre-installed and comes with the fusion. The rest of the stuff, and it's, as I said, it's about like, uh, 50 connectors uh, could be downloaded on request. So if you choose a local file system, that's what I did, uh, you need to specify a path to, to it, okay, sorry. But okay, anyway, so th then you, you just specify a path of the file system, it does crawl and then it index there. And uh, then I use the index workbench uh, to tune up the process of EPL, of extraction, transforming data and then loading into solar. And here you see like uh, there is a field mapping stage uh, where we do like uh, moving like a color 
uh, field into movie color. Just as, as an example, there is a solar dynamic field mapping uh, stage. Uh, this is one of the stages we created specifically for user experience for the very uh, new users of Fusion. It allows you to index data in solar with a maximum, uh, it tries to guess the type of the data you, you're querying, and type of the field. And uh, for example, you see what it does. Uh, here in the list of the field, uh, uh, many of the text fields are indexed both as a strings and as a text. Uh, they're indexed as a strings because we want to have a good search engine experience, but it's also indexed as a text because you want it to have a, a good uh, search experience. So for example, if you search by a partial text, we also wanted to find this document. So for example, the director's name, the James Cameron. So if someone will uh, search for a Cameron, they will find the document. Uh, and it, it's controlled by like one text box, uh, one checkbox. So if you will just apply it, you will immediately see the result that changed. So you do not see the uh, underscore S uh, fields anymore. So you only have a text field, which is the default one and so on. So pretty much uh, this one, for example, it's a regex field extraction uh, field. And what it does, uh, like uh, genres in the original file, you see they are represented as a string with uh, some separator. And you want it to turn it into multi-value field in solar. And uh, to do this, you pretty much just use a stage and you just uh, define a regex there. You say, that, okay, I want it to split by this. And then it uh, indexes uh, as a uh, result, it will be multi-value field in the solar. So, to okay, I could barely see it here. Um, oh, it's actually not there because we, yeah, we, we stopped indexing this as a string field. So I need to now to enable it back. Let me enable it back. Okay, so now, we, yeah, now we, we actually we copy it because we, we use a uh, underscore s field as a source. So here we, we see the values is already split. And then when you do like a query workbench, you can pretty much just uh, use the results of this to uh, to see your data uh, in solar and uh, adjust it. I mean, so you can see the, all the fields uh, there. You can drop some fields. You can play with the uh, stages on the query pipeline. Uh, you can add facets uh, like, you know, if you want it like to use the genres, uh, genres. Uh, okay, where is it? Yeah, you, you will see it here and um, you, you can add another facet and so on. So it's a very powerful tool. So for um, like a keyword, yeah, like a plot keyword. So you see, I mean, if you like select uh, comedy, you will see one set of keywords. If you uh, select uh, something like uh, action or thriller, it will be totally different set of, and so on. So again, I mean, it, it's a very powerful tool to tune up your uh, search uh, experience. And you can work with a, a query workbench to emulate uh, signals. You can emulate like clicks and tune up. Okay, yeah, I, I understand, I need, I need to finish in because of uh, next presenter. But anyway, I mean, feel free to reach out to me and I will be glad also to demo it. I mean, maybe somewhere else, maybe I will do some sort of webinar as well uh, with this sort of demo because it's very important to give the initial hands-on experience on how easy to index data, how easy it is to work uh, with the Fusion concepts as a developer. Thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm.